Welcome to Fiction Fetish, the community book club for the indoor adventurers. I'm Bree, and if I could control an element, I would have an affinity for Earth. Uh, my name is O'Reilly, and if I had a certain element that I could control, um, whether it be in the universe of Pokemon, Bionicle, or Avatar, Avatar, or Darker Shade of Magic by E.V.E. E. Schwab, uh, it would be water. Always water. Always water. Yeah. I'm water, water, water. always earth. I just feel like it goes much more with my personality. So every month we pick a book, read it, review it, and discuss it and share those opinions here online. This month we have chosen A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It should be said that V.E. Schwab goes by that name when she does her adult content books. And then she goes by Victoria Schwab when she's doing YA. Um, so, just a brief summary, in case you haven't read this book. There's a guy. His name is Kel. He... Hi, Kel. Huh? Nothing. Did you say hi, Kel? Yes. <laughs> he is an, Anta- an Antari. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. That's how it is in the audiobook. Antari. A person who is very powerful with magic, and including but not limited to dark blood and bone magic. As well as all the other elements. He is seen with an incompletely black eye, which I thought was very visually stunning. I thought that one was black, very... one blue, right? Yeah. But like it's not even just the color of his eye is black, it's like the entire, the entire thing, thing is black. The iris, the pupil, the, the, the cornea, everything. I thought that was very interesting. We shall discuss this later. He is one of the royals of Red London, and his job is to transfer messages and only messages to the parallel slash stacked uh, Londons. There are technically four. There's Grey London with no magic, allegedly. <laughs> There's Red London where magic thrives, and it is, it's almost like a companion, you know, especially to Kel. And there's White London, where magic is a level of power and dominance, and Black London, which is a world that, quote-unquote, does not exist, allegedly, due to being absolutely consumed by magic. So Kel uh, loves smothering more than letters, which gets him into trouble, and leads him to meet uh, Lila, who is a pirate, a.k.a. Kira Knightley from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, no. Come on. Give her way more credit than that. Kira Knightley is a shitty character. <laughs> Delilah is actually a cool, awesome female rogue. I, I do. I love Lila. But when yeah. I like when I picture her, I picture her with the attire that she, I mean, Kira sure, has. she can look like Kira Knightley, but ugh, that character in the movies is bullshit. <laughs> I hate that character. But yeah, uh, yeah. so that was just a brief summary of the first one, because this is a planned trilogy. So this is only part one of the overall arc of the story. And uh, as always, everybody, uh, you're welcome to join in our conversations, reviews, and progress on our Goodreads group. Um, the link is in our description box on any format that you are viewing this on, as well as on the screen right now. Ta-da! So... Uh, this was your book. This was my choice. I chose the last one. Yes. You chose this one. Yes. Um, and it's it's apparent that we have a fondness for fantasy, a <laughs> yeah. fondness for magic, and a fondness for this sort of world. Yeah. So I chose this book because I am on Tumblr, and so is a certain someone. By the pen name Lil Miss Banana. <laughs> yes, our, go- our good friend from an old job. Yes. And at one point, her wall was completely consumed with artwork and posts about this book. And so it looked interesting. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing is after reading this book, I've realized that this book is incredibly popular. Very popular. And very well reviewed and very... Uh, yeah, passionately adored by its fans. Yes. But I had never heard of it till you told me Correct. like there's a story book. And yeah, and it's very well received. There were very few bad reviews on Goodreads. At least we, when you do your yeah. initial scroll yeah. down. But we can get to that later. Yeah. Um 
So, so I just found that fascinating because the last yeah. two books that we reviewed, it was not that case. Yeah. Um. So what? So why did you decide this was going to be the book? What made you what made you swing to that decision? Well, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to check it out and read. Yeah, it. we we trust her. Yeah. opinions on books for and the most there's part. also an amazing youtube channel by the name of best fantasy books hq and they just do like these little guides and like animated like two minute videos about a certain book and they they did actually do the name of the wind recently but mm-hmm. before that they did one on a darker shade of magic and the way they explained it and the way they just left you hanging i was like oh okay that sounds like a really interesting book i want to check it out and so check out their channel. It's really good. So um, do you think this takes place in our world? Do you think Grey London is our universe? It sure seemed that way. Because one, it's Mad King George. Uh-huh. That of Grey London. He's the ruler. Uh-huh. And that is obviously King George the, the, the third. Uh-huh. Um, who was alive in like, like the like I I want to say his rule was like 1750 on. Um, but yeah, so it's like it matches the time period. It matches the setting that they kind of have portrayed of like the world and everything like that. Yeah. Um, it also striked me as odd that I had just finished watching a show called, um, uh. Victor Strange and or or Mr. Re- um not Victor um, um I don't know it's your show <laughs> uh Mr. Norell and Jonathan Strange it was a BBC drama and it takes place pretty much during the same time and Mad King George is in it too and these wizards or magicians as they're called in the thing there's only two of them in the entire world and they act as like the royal and government emissaries you know and they they do mm. the bidding of the government and the, and the king you know and they so kind of similar right and so I was, I was drawing a lot of comparisons because jonathan strange and mr Dorbell, i know it, it's a book i haven't read the book i've just seen the show and so the, basically the show allowed me to create a context and a setting more visually mm-hmm. not not that the book had any problem with creating a world we can talk about that in a second but it was just uh, i was drawing like oh gray london to me was a lot like the London that I saw in that show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, but like, obviously it doesn't really matter. It's not important that it, like it's our world or whatever. I don't think Correct. there's any, like it didn't need to be mad King George. It could have just been any old King and named him any old thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, according to the video that I mentioned earlier, it says that it takes place in 1819. I don't remember if it said 1819. That. Yeah. Oh, shoot. King George dies next year, then. Oh, interesting. I bet that I wonder, place... I wonder if that's in the sequel. Because I bet. King George died in 1820, I believe. Yeah. Yes. He I don't died. know where he got that, because I don't remember reading that. I don't remember I seeing don't have a... the best memory when it comes to... Yeah, but they might have just been something that they said once, and, you know. Exactly. The Lord's Year of 1819. Yeah, so that's that was in the in the Ultimate Guide even though it's, it's not an ultimate guide. <laughs> so so one thing I want to I want to talk about briefly is Absolutely. this the author that wrote this VE Schwab aka Victoria Schwab is kind her backgrounds in young adult novels apparently and I haven't read any of her things. I haven't read anything from this author. But this is definitely not a young adult novel. Really? Because I actually didn't it's, think it, it was It reads easily? Yeah. It's not a difficult book to read, and the way she writes, the prose is very fluid and fast and, yeah. and energetic, and so it reads like one. Yeah. But if we want to talk about tropes and and what happens between characters, and again, this is a fucking book review of a book that we have read, so we're gonna get into spoilers. I don't want to see any comments. People die. Yeah. That we don't want to see die. Um, I, we need to talk about it, because I don't think they're dead. Well, okay. Who are you talking about? Well, okay, so, um, Kel's brother, well, right. who's not really his brother, the prince, right. he gets, he gets killed. Yeah, but then brought back but, to life. Yeah, 
Um, but like, I mean, in in the sense that like th- there is, I don't know. It there's it doesn't. Danger. And also, uh, Cal and Delilah. Yeah. There's never a scene where he like looks into her eyes and feels the passionate energy of a woman's embrace. You know, like that right. that doesn't that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. And I don't. It think was interesting because ev- as I was reading it, I was like, "Are we gonna go the path where they're romantic, or is this gonna be like a Doctor Donna, uh, Doctor Donna and Doctor <laughs> situation? You know, where yeah. they're like just like really good partners." And 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 that's the thing is like they're both they're both, I don't know, they're not really friends. And they're not really enemies. Yeah. And they're not really allies. Yeah. It's like they're just in. They're in on this, you know, crazy nightmare of a storm together. Yeah, I really, I really liked. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now, my favorite character was Lila. <laughs> She's great. She's great. I mean, I, 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 I like Kel. But yeah, she's she, Lila's great. She's fun. I she's... loved her introduction. <laughs> yeah. Well, that okay. Let Let's talk about that for a second too. I feel like we're just running in circles here because we're, <laughs> we've come across a new topic. This is not as structured as our other ones, I feel. Um, so the the plot takes a long time to happen. Yes. The conflict, I should say, take a long time. Like the, there's a plot from the beginning. Right. But it's a lot of buildup. Yeah. She spends a good third of the book just world building, character introducing, fleshing out the different worlds, teaching you how the magic works, then introducing you to this Delilah Bard. Yeah, because Lila comes in late. Way later. Yeah, Lila doesn't come in until, I think, a third. Yeah, and I was like, wait, who's this character? It's... We've been spending time with Kel this whole time. And I think that's another thing of that's not very young adult. Mm-hmm. Where... Oh, let's introduce you to a character really late into the book. That's fine. Books do that. But yeah. let's introduce you to the main character. Yeah. The person who's going to then be with us for the rest of the book and potentially the rest of the series. Yeah. You know? Um Yeah, it's uh it 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 it's it reads really, really well. It has, she she really knows how to put voices to things and the world building is great. Um she manages to do what I think Patrick Rothfuss did with Name of the Wind mm-hmm. in explaining things and showing things, but without being so proper about it. He writes very, I don't want to say posh, but almost, right. you know, it's a very, it's a very eloquent, like, oh, look at me. I know the English language kind of way. Right. But where as she was writes in that character. Right. Exactly. So, but this is a very, again, it reads in style to a young adult novel in terms of its quickness and speed and ability to read. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's blood and very mature characters and very mature character um, motivations, Mm -hmm. you know, of like, oh, we're going to take over the world, you know, but in this very sinister, dark, you know, like, like possess people and murder them type of way, you know, it's, yeah, it's, well, when you put it that way, it was funny because I was actually leaning toward this wasn't really an adult novel just because – and this it's is bad though. because I'm thinking – because I was going to say it didn't seem dark enough, but that's <laughs> that, that's a really bad definition to just be like it needs to be darker in order to be considered an adult. Well, and that's the other thing too is is I think from the emergence of Harry Potter and the Hunger Games where the series gets progressively darker. Mm-hmm. And what starts out as a young adult novel kind of transforms into an adult novel, especially with Harry Potter, because its audience is growing with it. Right. But I think, you know, there's still there's still young adult novels through and through. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, I, I I don't I don't know if I could give this to a, an eleven year old and be like, have fun with this, and they would be <laughs> they would be as easily captivated. Because, because again, I think with the fact that it takes so long to get started, yeah, is honestly, it's one of my biggest faults with this book. Is I almost got frustrated with it. Oh, really? Because of that, I was waiting for things to happen. Right. And I wasn't bored with the world building. It was cool, and it was great to see all the different Londons, and it was great to be introduced to all these really interesting different characters. It was really cool to learn about the Antari and how the magic works. Yeah. But I was just like, when the hell is the conflict going to start? That's funny. And they kept hinting at it, 
Yeah. Like really early when you meet the other Antari. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're the bad guy. <laughs> and, you know, so and then and then and then I was like, okay, stuff is gonna happen. Oh, I didn't even think that when I you first know? met Holland. I just thought he was. Oh come on, he wipes the mind of a guard. Yeah, I know. After but I giving just him a serious that... gift to the prince, I, I was just... like, oh. I know, but I just thought it was like he was just. You know, we met Kel, and we just think, oh, all the Antari are like this. And then we met really? Holland and go, oh, no, that's just Kel, <laughs> you know. And so that's well, what I took from that. Yeah, and I thought that was the start. I thought the moment we met Holland, I was like, all right, here, here it he goes. <laughs> nope. <laughs> He's just rubbing his hands together. Literally, literally. Like, I was, yeah. And that, and that happens pretty quick. Yeah. And I was ready for it to kick off. Right, and, and it doesn't. And it doesn't. Not um, for a little while, because he has to have the whole conversation with the prince. And Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah. Um, so I want to bring up something now. Sure. Because we forgot to bring this up when we did Patrick Ross with his name of the wind. Sure. Darker Shade of Magic is being adapted for television. It is. It is. Oh, interesting. So what did you forget during the name of the wind? The name of the wind is being adapted for television. Oh, oh, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so same, same. <laughs> so um, Gerard Butler has a production company, and his production company has acquired the rights to adapt the book as a limited series. Interesting. Um, that was that was around February two thousand sixteen. Okay. Uh, that was so, recent. yeah. Well, I mean, considering television shows. Yeah. So it, it it'll be it'll be interesting, but it's just the first book, right? So it looks like it, it'll be like a mini series type thing, you know? Oh, okay. Which That's I think it it would work well as you know. Yeah. I think it'd be a good like six episode series or something like that. Yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, you know when they go to uh they go back to Grey London. Mm-hmm. And they go to the Stone Throw Tavern. Yeah. And then the poor owner of the Stone Throw Tavern dies. Yeah, I was sad. Uh, that you remember in um, Stranger Things mm-hmm. with the really nice yeah, what's big her name? Beefcake guy takes care of Eleven at the diner. Wait, what? No. In the very beginning, Eleven goes to this diner. Oh, yeah. And the owner of the diner is like this big beefcake of a man. Yeah. And he meets her and he's like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, let me come here. And he takes care of her. And then he gets fucking murdered. Spoilers. Yes. Um, that was a terrible situation. I felt the same way with this. Of like, oh, this kind old tavern owner is just taking care of And he's dead. And he's dead. <laughs> he's not a main character. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, but that's what I mean. Like, characters died, you know? That's true. Um, that that person did die. You know who didn't die? Who didn't die? <laughs> Archibald. <laughs> Whatever his name is. He's the guy in the very, very beginning, and he wanted to get something from Kel. You thought he was going to die? Well, yeah, because there's a part, there's another part when we visit him later, and uh-huh. there's like a zombie, dark magic possessed Oh, yeah, yeah, one of the black magic things. Like, He's going to kill Archibald, and then they just look under the carriage, and nothing's there. <laughs> and that was the entire chapter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, oh, okay. Well, I'm kind of glad though, because I really liked that character. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Like that chapter seemed almost out of place. Yeah, because it was like this, gro- like you said, growing conflict." And then it was like, nah, actually, we're good. This is mm-hmm. the one you need to worry about. It's the other one in right. Red London, not Grey so, London. Yes, that's that was the thing too of of, you know. So it's it okay. Let's talk about some like clues and hints and imagery and stuff like that. Sure. Um. So when the when the people get consumed by the dark magic. Yeah. Their eyes turn black. Yeah. Just like the Antares eyes are black. Well, yeah, except it's the both one, their eyes. The one... Huh? Except it's both their eyes instead of just one. The one London that has been destroyed, essentially, by magic... Black London. Is black yes. London. When Kel is absorbed by 
the stone, I guess. Right. It's called um, Vitari. Yes, Vitari. Thank you. It, it's hard because it sounds like Antari. Right. Um, when he gets consumed, he kind of goes a little like it, it, like the dark magic forms around his entire thing and it tries to destroy him, mm -hmm. but he dispels the magic. Right. But then that kills all the other people that were consumed by it too. Well, I don't think it kills them. I no, think they were already dead. They were released they were as zombies. the magic was dispelled. Right. Um. So is I got the inclination that that meant the Antari were half the traditional magic mm -hmm. and half black magic. I thought the same. That like, the black magic is obviously the more powerful magic, yeah. but it can easily destroy you. Yeah. And the Antari have some sort of thing within them that allows them to kind of split that side of them. So they're half Correct. the traditional semblance magic, mm -hmm. and then half they use that blood dark black magic yeah which i really didn't understand like the difference because there are characters that can control bone magic which i thought was the dark magic but it wasn't no. and so i was like okay what's i felt like that wasn't very well explained and maybe she'll do it in the in the future books but i just like i'm like what is the dark magic like i don't understand because everything else needs to have an element that you control but the dark magic just seems to be like traditional Accio, you know, magic, you know, where it's just like you can do anything you want, where every all the other magic, you need some sort of anchor mm -hmm. and like something to control where the dark magic is almost like it's just thoughts and therefore more powerful. But I just felt like that wasn't really well explained. I was like, why? Why? Why can these people do it and these people can't? But some people can do mode magic, but they can't do dark, dark magic, you know? Right. And, like, it wasn't really explained that, like, can some people do multiple elements? Or is this, like, an avatar thing where they can only do one element? It's It seemed to be that you that the most, the standard magic users in, in like, Red London and stuff, it was a, you mastered one. Yeah. And that you kind of knew the other. Yeah. Whereas the Antari were like the Avatar and they knew all of them. Right. Plus their own like separate kind of magic. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You no, know, I mean, and it's so funny because of how well she kind of explains a lot of stuff and how well she goes through like the history of the worlds and everything like that. And then, yeah, that then there's it's this like one. It's like super ambiguous. Right. Of right. like, yeah. So I hope she explains that in future books, but. I just thought is, that yeah. was left to be desired, but, you know. So, um, go ahead. Keep going. No, 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 you go. Uh, well, mine's kind of off topic. That's fine. Okay. So, I asked Little Miss Banana to send us questions because this is one of her favorite books. Oh, did you really? I did. Oh, that's cool. So, she sent us some questions, I and no I really like this, this first one. So it's, and since we're talking about Antari and who can control what, and Grey London seems to have no magic, clearly something is up with Lila. What are some of your theories? Do you think she is from Grey London? What about her, quote unquote, unawakened powers mentioned by Tyrion, I'm assuming is how it's pronounced? Uh, she was able to travel between Londons with Kel even after she got rid of Atari. So I think it's obvious she's an Antari. Like, so obvious. Well, then that that it begs the question of, do in order to get that black eye, does your magic have to be awakened? Is that a result of you no, embracing the darker? No, they said they cut out her eye. So I think she oh. was... She was born with a black eye, and they cut it out, and then she has a glass eye in there. I mean, when oh, I read that, yeah, I thought right. it was Fuck. so... Excuse me, but <laughs> it kind of made me mad. I was like, this is so fucking obvious that, like, w like, ugh, I was just mad. I, I actually wanted it to be a part. red herring. I wanted her to be like, oh, yeah, one of my eyes is a glass eye. And then, like, later on, we'll find out that she's not an Antari at all. And it was, like, totally <laughs> a red herring. Because I just think it's so obvious at this point that I'm like, uh, like it's not even going to be a well, surprise. Well, the fact that she lived in Grey London. Yeah. 
but then could do magic. Right. The fact that she was super, that she, that could, she could go travel. through. Like, she couldn't do it independently. Well, she never tried. That is interesting. I, like, I think it's obvious, and it's nice, I, because then, I think it would be interesting if there's one Antari per world. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Because and that it just we, makes sense. That we might meet, like, the black Antari. Yeah. That's, okay. well, yeah, okay. Like, I mean, I thought she was, just because of the fact that she could use magic while nobody else in Great London could. Mm. That didn't bother I, me as much. But once they said she had the glass eye, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, I mean, that then that cinches it. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, it's canon. <laughs> and that's where I was kind of like, ah, I mean, I don't know how you make it subtle, but I just thought it wasn't subtle at all, although you didn't think she was in Tari, so I guess it's just I, me. I, I just completely forgot about the eye thing. Oh, yeah. I remember reading that and just kind of going, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and not fully connecting that. That's so funny. I actually went back because I was so mad when that reveal happened. I was like, they better have mentioned this earlier. Do they say which eye is which? Do they ever say his like, right eye or his left I'm eye? I'm pretty sure it's his left eye is the black eye. And is is it that is that the same for Holland? And is I'm pretty sure. her left eye missing too? Pretty sure. I mean, that would make sense if we want to talk about yeah. left and right and about how right is good and left is bad. And yeah. That whole mythology. But, All right. So I went back because I was like, they she better have mentioned this slightly browner eye earlier. And they did. So I gave her a little bit of leeway because it was like never mentioned. But it's cool. I'm fine now. <laughs> we're good everybody we're safe i still lila's still my favorite character i just thought that was so like not dumb but i just like okay like why can't we just have her human mm -hmm. but i would find a lila who's an antari very interesting because i feel like she connects to the magic different than kel connects to magic and different than holland connects to magic so it would be really interesting of like Maybe it will consume her because mm -hmm. she's she didn't grow up with it, right? Because she's such like this. Oh, I want adventure. I don't care if I die. Like I just want to do this, and I want to I want to make she a big the... impact on the world. And then if you give her magic, like she will make a big impact on the world. Like that's kind of scary. Um, how old do you think Kel is? I'm pretty sure he's like twenty. I thought that was said. Well, he, that's the thing. He's Kel's brother. Right. Sorry, no, Kel's, Rin's no, he's brother. Rai's brother, but they're, like, adopted. Rai's brother, yeah. But, like, when he was first introduced, I thought he was, like, 30. <laughs> you did what I do with characters. <laughs> like, I thought he was, like, a bit older, a bit wiser. <clears throat> like, he didn't strike me as the, I don't know, if, if I was, you know, I'm about 20, and, you know, I, I, <laughs> he's he's way more mature than me and so in my head i was like oh he's gotta be like 30 <laughs> you know <laughs> no i didn't think that at all i thought uh, he he played his his role but then later then later it kind of got flushed out more and i was like okay yeah he's about yeah he's probably about that age yeah uh so talking about uh the way holland and kel both treat their magic relationship uh, the treatment mm -hmm. of the Antari as a whole varies wildly between the three Londons. Uh, how do you think Holland or Kel characters might have differed if they switched places? If Holland was Rai's brother, if Lila had met White London version of Kel, etc. Well, that is interesting. <laughs> well, he's been... Kel's been doing it from being a boy. I think... I mean, that's the com that's the conversation of nature versus nurture, right? You know, because I, I do find it very interesting. Because I do think it's because Holland grew up in White London and with that culture of you need to have amazing magic power in order to survive. Yeah, it's a very oppressive. Like bad you could place. be eaten if you don't have magic. Um, that Holland has this mentality towards magic that, no, you dominate the magic. 
just like you dominate people with that magic. And um, where Kel, growing up in Red London, where magic is almost like thriving and it's just like a friend. They have parties and parades with magic elements. That Life is better with magic. Yeah, yeah. That Kel would grow up with a relationship where it's like, oh, no, like magic's a companion. You guys are equals together. You are working together toward the pr- same goal, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel well, like if they were if they were switched, I honestly think it would have been the same. Like I think there would have been a Holland type Kel and mm-hmm. a Kel type Holland. Because I think a lot of the reason that Kel kind of gets into trouble is because he grew up in a world where there is so much magic. Yeah. That he kind of he enjoys the non magic tech. You know, he enjoys the. The simplicity of Grey London. He enjoys the, you know, how simple and yet complex their lives are as a result, you know, and like that kind of that gets him into the trouble of, you know, showing off and smuggling and, you know, doing things that he really shouldn't. You know, he's a little bit more rebellious. Absolutely. Um, And I think that's a result of his position, of his job, of having to go across to these different Londons and exploring them and stuff, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like if you had a job where every six months you have to go to another country and they have, like, the world's best fruit, but mm-hmm. because of weird fruit laws, you can't bring it back home. Yeah. After, like, the 80th trip, you'd be like, well, I'm just going to bring one, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, so. Absolutely. I think that, I think what happens to each character and who they are as characters would happen no matter what. Plus, don't you think he, he does it to kind of figure out what his identity is? Because he yes. doesn't know his backstory. He doesn't know who, where he comes from. He just knows, oh, I was a young boy and I was adopted by this family and this is what I do. Yeah. Because that's the other thing. We don't really know the characters as children. No. We, we join into their lives much later. Yeah. And their whole childhood is kind of a mystery. So, I mean, if we knew more about who they were as children, maybe our answers would be different. But... Yeah, I think I think what they did and who they are is entirely a result of where they grew up and where they've lived mm-hmm. and the backgrounds of, you know, the luxury of the red world and the oppressive dangers of the white world, you know? Yeah. So what do you think about Cal? I love him. I think he's great. I really like the character. I was inter- I was instantly like, oh, you're fun and interesting and... You know, I liked him as the hero of our story. Um, Do you have any theories on his backstory? Because he's super mysterious. I think it was a thing of when he was born, they knew he was Antari, and the royal family basically claimed him. And they're like, okay, he's ours. You know. Yeah, like, do you think that's the culture of Red London? That, they the- like, there's always an Antari associated with the royal family? And it's like, before they were so scarce, they would just have their pick of them. And they'd be like, okay, you, you are you work for the royals now. Or, and the- now that it's so scarce, it's like, well. Yeah, since the black, well, that's the thing. Again, going with this idea that the black magic from black London is what is, you know, turning them into antari you know they're like half good half evil right like um little miss banana here even asks do you think he's from great uh oh no sorry she says do you think lila's from gray gray london i do think she's from gray london actually but do you think i I like the theory i like the theory that there's one antari per world that's what i that's exactly what i thought like when they said that her i was a glass eye i was like oh that'd be cool because holland's from white he's from but red that's the other follow-up question of who cut her eye out who would have known Grey London does isn't full of magically knowledgeable individuals. They don't know about the magic, you know. Um, so it'd been interesting to see who, like, what person knew and was like, "Oh, we gotta hide her," you know. Right, and kind of like save her from this life. Right, they didn't want her to be associated with it. Yeah. Like no, but yeah, I like Kel. You know, he's he's a very he's kind of cocky and confident at times. But he's also very hesitant inwardly, like you get to, because you get to hear his thoughts and stuff. And he's kind of a, he's, 
he, he doesn't really like to kind of share his feelings with a lot of people. You know, he yeah. kind of keeps it to himself. He, he's a little bit more quiet. While Lila is the archetype strong female character. Mm-hmm. You know, feats of strength and energy and, and triumph and danger. Aha! You know, like... <laughs> Adventure! Ha ha! And, and that's who she is, you know? And like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going to murder a dude and fight this guy. And, yeah, you know. dude. And so Her she's... Her count is through the roof. She's a very opposite character of Cal in terms of personality. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think Holland is also an opposite of them as well. Oh, you know, absolutely. they like, you know, the brooding mastermind, you know, kite type character. Although as well. we should make it clear that it is the uh, possessed Holland who is the opposite. We really yes. never met Holland. Regular Holland. We don't know what he's like normally. Yeah. Which was a shame. Um, Holland's character really was interesting to me. I kept waiting for that moment when they like break the possession and like finally talk to him. And it was like, no, he's. Although, see, this was the thing I was talking about earlier. I don't think he's dead. We'll meet him in the second book. Because they never said he died. He just kept having a weak heartbeat and then they just threw him into black London. I'm like, dude, there's no way he's dead. I don't know. I took it as a thing of Holland was done with being possessed and he was just like, kill me now. Yeah, you but know? he's not like, dead. Like that that whole thing of, kill me, you know? like No, absolutely. Like... But they never did. They just threw him in Black London. Well, yeah, he doesn't... Well, it's obviously important that he kept the body. Like he kills him and then they take they take the body to White London and then, you know, Lila's there killing a bunch of dudes and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just, I think he might, like, die. Like, officially. Mm-hmm. And that might be something that drives the character, you know? Mm-hmm. But we'll just drives have to see for Kel? the next book. Yeah. To do what? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Cause I yeah I definitely don't think he's dead. They they kept saying the we can't be he we can't be. I mean she said it like three times that I'm like okay I know what you're saying. Like we'll meet him again and because he's being thrown into Black London, there's probably still magic thriving somewhere and then he'll get healed and he'll come back and we'll see him again. We'll pro- probably with the fourth Antari from Black London. <laughs> or he becomes the Black Antari. I would be upset by that because that's pretty much what he was in this book. He was already a possessed big bad in this book. That if well, they do you did it think, again, I'd be like, Do you think on. the rumors and the stories we hear about Black London are true then? I think it's still alive, if that's what you're asking. Like, I think there's people still living there and they just can't get across right now. Because, we, yeah, it's just too mysterious to just be like, yep, everything we know about it's correct. <laughs> If TV, movies, and books have taught me anything. (laughs) Yeah. Until we see an actual dead body that's, like, buried in the ground or see the actual thing that's, like, dead, then it's it's alive. I mean, one person's already been brought to life, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's the the other thing I was going to say. They could be buried, but uh, we could see them again. (laughs) Yeah. It's books. They can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. Okay, well, this is kind of what we were talking about. So um, how convincing is it that magic trickled out of existence because of Black London? Talking about, uh, like, Grey London no longer has magic. Well, I I don't consider them corners. I don't consider the world corners of each other. What do you mean by corners? Like north, south, east, west. Okay. I consider them in a line. Yes, I believe so that's Black what they London's were saying. Black London's all the way on the far right. Correct. Super full of magic. Yes. Red London's next to it. Uh huh. It's getting the residual effects of that magic. They're full of magic. They got a ton of it, but it's not overwhelming. Uh huh. White London is the next step. They've got magic, but it's scarce and rare. They beg, they hunt, they kill for it. Yes. Grey London doesn't get anything. No magic is getting to them. It stops at the wall between them. Mm-hmm. That's how I imagine the world. Right. So yes, and that's to how me, they the, it in the book. To me, the idea that Black London has this endless source of powerful, powerful magic and is constantly oozing it 
makes a lot of sense for why that world would then self implode and like its inhabitants and the government and everything uh, running it would just just destroy itself inwardly because you know too much power you know nobody's special if everybody is you know like, do you I, think then it, it almost took magic from the other londons because the like how does it explain gray london not having any magic i just i considered it entirely a a there's a like a, a fountain you know there's a geyser there's a there's a, a hot spring mm. of magic somewhere in that world gotcha I didn't. I didn't think of it as a as a as a magnet or a black hole absorbing magic. Yeah. I considered it a. It's the source. A beacon. Yeah. There's and a, now that it's cut off, everything else is losing it slowly. And great. That gray London at one one point might have had more magic. That's interesting. Know? Well, they that, definitely said that. They said all the worlds had magic, and that the Antari kept going in between the worlds for business reasons. I guess. Mm-hmm. And like, but it. Oh yeah, but everyone could go between the worlds. It also explains if we want to say if we, if for sure that Grey London is our London. It also explains the whole idea of like oh back in the day we had fairies and dragons and yeah. wizards and you know so it's like oh yeah magic used to exist yeah. you know and that's why there's stories about it yeah and you know I like that kind of like mythology reasoning yeah um, so, but yeah no I I like the idea that Black London was this beacon of light aka darkness mm-hmm. that emanated throughout the rest of the worlds yeah no that makes a a whole lot of sense in the middle of reading i had this crazy conspiracy theory that uh well it's not even conspiracy but that uh the london's weren't parallel universe they were actually uh somewhere in the timeline like gray london was that they the beginning. weren't that they weren't passing through it they were just advancing forward yeah. backwards in time they were actually time traveling well i mean they're not yeah but it doesn't yeah. make sense because they're all on the same like there's no advanced technology or anything yeah but i thought i liked the idea of that that they only thought they were going to a parallel but really they were just going to that is definitely a crazy conspiracy theory. i liked it a lot i really enjoyed it because it, cause it's like, man, there's like different languages and there's different country names. But for some reason, all the worlds decided to name this part London. It was very strange. So going on the uh, feminist point of this book, because Lila is a strong character. Very strong female character. And she is consistently dressing as a man. To the point where when she has the option of going Cinderella on everybody, she decides to get a better looking coat and pants. And like she pretty much shops in the men's section of, yeah, well, of the store. It's way more it's way more practical for Absolutely. the lifestyle she does. She can't be swinging on the on the ropes of on the deck of a ship in, in <laughs> pantaloons, you know, like that's that's not gonna that's I not gonna help it, her. Like I think it's a good discussion because it's always this how do you portray you know, like this powerful, a char- powerful female character without, but like, but like making her more like a man because then it's like, oh, but then that's not a female character. You know, you're not, you're not doing the feminist ways by, you know. I don't know. I know a lot of, I know a lot of girls that shop in the boys or men section. No, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just well, like, okay. I don't, cause honestly, I loved it. Yeah, here's Personal the thing for you. I don't I think it. I'm allowed to answer this being a man. Okay, I sure. don't think I can give a feminist perspective of this. But I, okay. You tell me. Because I thought it her. was very interesting. As I was reading it, I was like, okay, what are all the decisions behind this? Like, she, because it's very purposeful. I mean, she keeps disguising herself as a man, and it could just be like, um,. I just considered it cultural. Yeah, I, it's just I the thought timeline. it was just in the in the world that she was in life was better if you were a dude you know because right. i mean come on it's gray london absolutely. in 1819 you know uh, like, men have more rights than women absolutely sexism is rampant you know I like uh, you know I so mean, and I her don't... introduction is her almost getting raped exactly and then she kills the guy which was yeah, she shanks a dude because um, i oh man i love that i want to go back to the introduction because i really enjoyed <laughs> it because i thought it was so interesting that she wasn't afraid it never yes. said that she was scared it was like Yep, this is the life I live. I have to kill dudes who are trying to rape me. <laughs> yeah, so I think I think it was not so much of a 
um, like, I'm a butch character, you know? I think yeah. it was just a, a, hey, I'm a lady that wants to do adventure and do all these crazy stuff and go on this crazy life and be a pirate. So I'm going to dress like a pirate and I'm going to disguise myself as a dude just to make my life a little bit easier until I can go off on these adventures and ignore all these crazy, stupid people who don't get me. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's what it was to me. I don't think it was a, anything other than just it fit the time period and it made sense to the world that we lived in. But again, I could be completely wrong and the author could have had a completely different perspective. Yeah. But, um, I didn't. I concur though. I thought the exact same thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I'm happy that there was no, like, oh, you're so beautiful and I love you and me and Kelly are going to go off together. You know, like, I, I was concur. glad that there was no stupid romance between the two of them. I concur, definitely. Um, I thought they were really good partners. There's there's no need for that. And I hope they continue to be good partners. partners. <laughs> yeah. um, so, obviously, there's a very big scene where Prince Rai, quote unquote, dies. And then is brought back to life. And it's, like, very emotional, obviously, for Kel. Because you understand that they have a really big relationship. But I thought that the the relationship itself wasn't, like, it wasn't described in the books. Like, like you didn't see it. it you just heard about it. And so when well, that part was happening, I was like, okay. Well, like, the very first interaction they have, it doesn't seem very brotherly. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. I, I mean, the character. I had no problems with the character, but like their interactions and the and the the for, like the craziness they felt about it was not super like present. Yeah, it wasn't like oh, this, this, this is a startling thing. You know, I concur, and I wanted more of the prince. Like when she introduced the character, I was like, oh, okay, is this going to be like a trio thing, you know? Or mm-hmm. like, are we going to see more of the prince? And we really didn't. And then, it, and then he was like dying. And I was like, oh, all right, well, that's the end of that character. And mm-hmm. then she was like, no, he's saved. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't really care right now because I don't know this character at all. Right. Other than he can't do magic. And he tells Kel not to bring things from other worlds. <laughs> uh-huh. That that was about the extent that we knew the prince. <laughs> but I definitely wanted more of him. And so I'm hoping, again, in the sequels, that we will get more of him. Mm-hmm. So we can head to final reviews. I can tell this is stirring conversation for you. <laughs> it, it's fine. It's just, it's, it's, um... Well, okay, I'll I'll do my review first. For sure. Um, I enjoyed reading the book. I thought it was a good, well written book, but I don't get the hullabaloo. I don't get why so many people are so passionate about this book. I completely and the concur. I don't get it. I don't think it's a bad book at all. Right. Kel was a cool character. I enjoyed him. I liked him. Yeah. Not super relatable to me. Me, Not super captivating. No. Delilah, fun, awesome. It's great to have a female lead in a care in a book that isn't just there for romance or background. Yeah. She's her own awesome, cool character. Great. Conquer. Sure, the villains were more fleshed out than standard villains, but honestly, it was I'm going to take over the world, and I have this doomsday device that's going to take over the world that's going to infect and turn everyone and help me. Oh, but then. Oh, it's all gone because you did this one thing, and ah, I'm ruined. You know. Oh no! Uh, it, it was it all was... planned out until then. <laughs> yeah. Um. I was annoyed by how long it took to actually get to danger. It was a lot of hinting, a lot of world building that I feel like just could have been done during the conflict. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, like okay, we're going to red. We're going here for the very first time because of danger. Now let's explain it. You don't yeah. need to explain it 200 pages before and then hit it, you know? And then explain it again under a different point of view. Uh, yeah. I mean, I like the book. It's a good book. I read it. I had fun with it. But I don't understand the hype. And I don't... I didn't super enjoy it compared to other fantasy books that I have read in my time. Yeah. I think it was because 
you were right. It it kind of is halfway young adult and halfway adult, mm-hmm. and it's not really quite both. And we just came, and I just came from reading. Uh, we just came from reading uh, "Name of the Wind," right. which is a very adult book with, uh, you know, yeah. and and very different way of speaking and writing. And I don't know. It good book, nothing super interesting. I don't think I'm gonna read the sequel, honestly. Really? I I'm not I'm not that captivated by it that I have to be like, but what happens? You know? No I mean, it's, way. And that and that's very rare. That's yeah, very rare. I usually have to continue it, but honestly, for this one, I'm just kind of like, okay. Meh. So I give it a three out of five. I mean, it was. Oh a, wow, that's actually higher than what I thought you were gonna give it. Because according to Goodreads, that means you liked it. I did. I did like it. Okay. I did like it. I had no problems while reading the book. It was well written. The characters were cool. I really liked Cal. But it wasn't enough for me to go, oh, I have to know more. Or, oh, this is so original and clever. Yeah. And, and oh, the, the, these 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 worlds are so captivating, you know? I mean, it was just, it was like, I, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. That's, that's my review. I think... I think Solid we definitely three. need more people in our in our podcast because I feel like the exact same way. <laughs> so I'll give my little spiel. It's only it's going to be very short because it's just going to parallel everything you said. <laughs> but it was the same thing. Like I thought Kel was cool, but he wasn't captivating like at all. I didn't really understand. And I thought the ex- when I was going to the Goodreads reviews, I was like, I bet there's going to be some bad ones. And they were like all five stars. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm going to be the minority here. This is interesting. Um, I yeah, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, I don't understand why it's such a big deal, because I just thought it like it just reminded me of like an avatar slash Lord of the Rings slash, you know, and I understand that every story is like, I, you know, I get it. But Jonathan that Strange rock, and Mr. Norrell. <laughs> that rock yeah. was so described like the ring that I was just like. Okay. <laughs> Possesses you. I, yeah. I enjoyed those descriptions, but every time it came up, I was like, oh, so the ring from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You got it. And um, I thought Lila was really cool. I am I am interested, like, in where, like, with these mysteries. But yeah. if I read the second one and it's like this one, I, I'm going to call it quits there. Or if you read the second one and, yeah, two-thirds into the book, they finally reveal that Lila's in Antari, but you've known the entire time. Like, Yeah, I yeah. hated that part. I was like, okay. I don't know. I, I I can't even really pinpoint it because I thought it was super obvious, but you forgot. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe it wasn't obvious, but um, yeah. So in this review... um. On Goodreads, I'm not going to say the user's name, but um, it says, I can't help but shake the feeling that V.E. Schwab had raised her wand, ready to cast the spell that would bewitch me with the word, but to to bewitch me, but the words never left her lips because it was like really good potential, really good story. And then it just kind of like fell flat. (laughs) And that's exactly how I felt reading this book because I was really Mm -hmm. interested in it. I, I liked the design, you know, all the all the pictures that <laughs> Little Miss Banana put on my wall on Tumblr, and I was ready, and then I was just like, this is it? This is all that you're giving me? I think this book would be a lot better if it was, like, 200 pages more, because I feel like that's some of our problems with it, is that, like, things weren't explained, there wasn't really some world building in it, and I didn't mind the slow pace in the beginning, I that was no problem for me especially considering the name of the wind which is pretty slow that i um i think if it was just like a bit longer it would be really nice because then it would kind of solve some of those problems and i loved the short chapters (laughs) just (laughs) whipping through those (laughs) yeah they go they go through pretty pretty damn quick yeah they do um so i was gonna give this i kept i kept teetering between I didn't like it and I liked it (laughs) so I'm and I didn't because I I just don't like giving it three stars because it's like more than half so I'm gonna give it (laughs) 2.5 so it's just right down the middle (laughs) 
Two point five. You got it. Because that's exactly ha- ex- what I felt. I was just like, exactly half. It's, yeah. It's just mediocre. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's just yeah, and it's a bummer because I feel like am I missing something? I do too. Yeah, I was but like, people... I don't, I don't get it. I mean, like, like I liked the, all the little mystery, but I just felt like it wasn't conveyed like i i had more fun discussing stuff with you and like theories with the books than i did like (laughs) reading the book at the time (laughs) yeah and i'm like okay there's a problem there then it it doesn't it doesn't help that i loved name of the wind oh yeah i wanted to mention that because we just got off that book which had like incredible world development and really cool characters. And so then reading this one, I was like, I feel like this isn't world building at all. <laughs> I mean, she built a red London, a white London, and a gray London. And then a gray London already existed yeah. in the real world. And so so really, like... she just created two Londons. Sure, and she created a magic system, but that magic system is pretty much the same as like... Super vague. As other magic systems. And... And yeah. I think that really hurt us reading this book because, like, I think both of us were like coming off of. The we name went of from the a wind. dude who built an entire continent to a lady that built two cities based off of an existing well, city. Well, to be fair, because I know the fans will hate us, <laughs> they'll say she made languages because there there's different languages in the different Londons. Yeah, but they don't. They don't speak entirely in those languages. They they like, it's do, not like Tolkien they do where like phrases, oh, there's an entire chapter Riley. where like an elf is speaking in Elvish and you're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh Vitari. Oh, oh yeah. the name of magic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't like the Deus Ex Machina of the whole thing of oh, Kel is strong and he then he just he fights off the magic and then the whole thing comes crumbling down. He's just like, able to do it because he's yes. amazing. And yeah. he doesn't know his background. It could be all explained in his background. And I think that's probably what's gonna happen. Is like he's actually the king of everything. There was one review that was really funny because it was like, and then you meet Kel. Oh, so original. <laughs> Oh, it was good. Read reviews are really good sometimes. Let's talk about for the month of October. It's all you. This okay. is your month. So this month, hold on, I'm gonna get the right. This is your love of Halloween and scary and super. Yeah. Tense. So Bree Bree said, "Hey, let's finish this book up real quick so that we Super can have quick. a book for the month of October." And I was like, "Okay." And she was like, "So you could choose a Halloween book." And I like how you expected me to have like one like ready. I did. I thought you. But had like, one. I don't really read a lot of like horror kind of books. Right. And so I was like, "Oh, okay." You know. So I started looking, and I realized that there was a book on my list that I really, really wanted to read for a very long time, and I just hadn't gotten around to it, which is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Eric with a K. Um, it's it's like a history crime novel, but it's based off of a true story. Okay. It's not based off of a true story. It is a true story. Mm-hmm. The entire thing is true and actually happened. It's This is our book. Read it. It's kind of horror-y. It's creepy, tense. It's creepy, it's spooky, it's intense. There's blood and murder and all that jazz. Serial um, killers. And it's very different than the other books we've read because... There's no magic. We've been reading a lot of fantasy, <laughs> and this isn't fantasy. Alrighty. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for this episode of Fiction Fetish. <sighs> Uh, if you want to continue the discussion, please join us on our Goodreads group, uh, Fiction Fetish on Goodreads. The link is on your screen now or in the description of your video or SoundCloud file or however the hell you're listening to this. You can also reach us on our respective Twitters. I'm at Riley Scott Tech. And I'm at the Brady. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank we'll see you. See you next month. Blah.